Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic very important topic papilledema and the various stages of papilledema papilledema optic disc swelling because of increased intracranial pressure is referred to as papilledema under all other circumstances disc edema is preferred so optic disc swelling because of increased intracranial pressure is referred to as papilledema under all other circumstances, disc edema is preferred. Pathogenesis of papilledema. Increased intracranial pressure exerts pressure on the optic nerves, which impairs axoplasmic flow and produces axonal edema and an increased volume of axoplasm at the disc. So the optic nerves continue towards the orbit the optic nerves are surrounded by meninges so when there is an increased intracranial pressure the pressure is transmitted under the arachnoid membrane the subarachnoid space and therefore it goes and compresses the optic nerve which impairs the axoplasmic flow and the venous return causing the papilledema so increased intracranial pressure exerts pressure on the optic nerves because the optic nerves are surrounded by the meninges which impairs the axoplasmic flow and produces axonal edema and an increased volume of axoplasm at the disc. So what happens when there is an increased axoplasmic volume? The swollen axons impair venous return from the retina, engorging first the capillaries on the disc surface, then the retinal veins and ultimately causing splinter and flame shaped hemorrhages as well as cotton wool exudates in the retinal nerve fiber layer. Further axonal swelling will eventually lead to elevation of the disc above the retinal surface. So what are the classic signs of papilledema? Transient visual obscurations, momentarily graying out or blacking out of vision, often precipitated by postural changes are classic symptoms of papilledema especially in idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Obscurations may be due to microvascular compromise at the nerve head. Now let's see the various stages of papilledema. Stages of papilledema. There are four stages of papilledema. The first is an early stage of papilledema. Second is fully developed papilledema. Third is chronic papilledema. Fourth is atrophic papilledema. Now first let's see the first stage of papilledema that is the early papilledema. The earliest change, the earliest change is loss of previously observed spontaneous venous pulsations. So the earliest change is loss of previously observed spontaneous venous pulsations. The presence of spontaneous venous pulsations indicates an intracranial pressure less than 200 millimeters of water. However, because they are absent in 10 to percent of normals, only the disappearance of previously observed spontaneous venous pulsations is clearly pathologic. The next stage is the fully developed papilledema. As papilledema develops, increased venous back pressure dilates the capillaries on the disc surface, transforming its normal yellowish pink color to fiery red. With further evolution, the patient will develop diffuse disc edema, cup obscuration, hemorrhages, exudates and venous engorgement. Frank disc elevation then occurs as the fundus develops into fully developed papilledema. The third stage is the chronic papilledema. Hemorrhages and exudates resolve and leaves a markedly swollen champagne cock disc bulging up from the plane of the retina. 
so champagne cock disc is seen in chronic papilledema in atrophic papilledema if unrelieved the impaired axoplasmic flow will eventually lead to death of axons and visual impairment which evolves into the stage of atrophic papilledema or secondary optic atrophy papilledema and vision very very important if a person has papilledema does he lose vision or not if a person develops papilledema papilledema he does not lose vision acute papilledema causes no impairment of visual acuity or color vision acute papilledema causes no impairment of visual acuity or color vision so in papilledema vision is not lost the blind spot may be enlarged but visual field testing is normal but in patients who develop optic atrophy following papilledema the visual morbidity can be severe and may include blindness so unless the person develops optic atrophy following papilledema or macular involvement persons with papilledema does not lose vision so persons with papilledema does not lose vision unless papilledema develops into optic atrophy or macula is involved very very important and pertinent clinical point papilledema and imaging with current technology imaging has usually detected intracranial mass lesions before the development of increased intracranial pressure and papilledema so when a person develops intracranial pressure because of the mass lesions we usually subject them for imaging and the ct or mri would have picked up the mass lesion even before the development of papilledema and therefore idiopathic intracranial hypertension is the most common cause of papilledema in the developed world because even if there is raised intracranial pressure even before the development of papilledema we do imaging and pick up the raised intracranial uh, tension because of mass lesions and therefore papilledema is not seen because we pick it up on ct and mri and then treat them accordingly so the only perhaps the only and most important cause of papilledema which is not picked up by imaging and therefore papilledema develops is idiopathic intracranial hypertension what are the other causes of disc edema papilledema because of the raised intracranial tension is usually bilateral papilledema because of the raised intracranial pressure it goes bilaterally and therefore papilledema is usually bilateral in persons having raised intracranial pressure but other causes of disc edema are often unilateral again a very important clinical point the other causes of unilateral disc edema are optic neuritis anterior ischemic optic neuropathy compression of the optic nerve in the orbit central retinal vein occlusion optic nerve infiltration diaptic papillopathy syphilis leber's hereditary optic neuropathy there are some conditions which mimics papilledema but they are not actually causing papilledema they are known as pseudopapilledema so what are the conditions which cause pseudopapilledema that is mimicking papilledema the common causes of pseudopapilledema include optic nerve drusen and myelinated nerve fibers yeah these are all the very very essential and important concepts of papilledema in fact ocular fundus is the only place where we can observe the vessels directly and the optic nerve head also directly so examination of ocular fundus and papilledema knowing all the stages of papilledema becomes a very very important clinical scenario in neurology so these are all the important concepts of papilledema and various stages of papilledema i hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture as much as i have enjoyed delivering it important concepts of neurology i put it in a question and answer format in a book focused neurology written by me s srinivas which is available online from all leading booksellers including amazon so it will be very useful for orals if interested it could be bought online uh, so these are the important concepts of papilledema i hope you have enjoyed it if you have really enjoyed it please like it share it and do not forget to subscribe it please subscribe my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my web page dr sinwas concepts thank you bye